Today we are gonna talk about druids, their beliefs, magic, and role in antique society. In our days, the word druid conjures thoughts of magic, wizardry, and spiritualism, but in ancient times the definition of druid was much broader. The druids were not a singular people or ethnic group, like we might speak of the Babylonians or the Hebrews. The term refers to the priestly class of the Celtic peoples who inhabited Britain before and during the Roman invasion of Julius Caesar, and later of Claudius. The true origin of the Druids is shrouded deep in the mists of time, and although Romanticists have associated them wrongly with the builders of the stone megaliths, they appeared some time after the disappearance of the stone followers, that mystical race of mathematicians and astronomers responsible for Stonehenge and the like. They did, however, have the knowledge to utilize the great stone monuments, but more of that later. Historians and archaeologists loosely agree on a rough time of appearance of the Druids in Britain between 1600 and 1400 BC. The historical references place them in Ireland in 1472 BC. Druidism appears to be a clannish cult, as they lived in small groups, or communes, with their wives and children, separate from whatever race ruled the land, indifferent to the politics of the day. Their communities were generally placed deep in the woods, with their dwellings generally being wood huts with thatched roofs, with a communal cook used also as a ritual fire in the center of a ring of dwellings. Their hierarchy was based on levels of knowledge, beginning with youths of either sex, at the level of aspirant. As the youths developed, they attained the next level, referred to as ovate. Once these youths reached their adulthood, as deemed by their respective clans, they became novitiates. There were 12 stages of novitiate, from the first cycle to the twelfth cycle. Thus, at the end of a 12-year novitiate, they came to the rank of druid, abandoning the colored robes of lesser rank to don the black or gray robe of the druid. After a period of highly specialized training, generally lasting from three to five years, depending on the individual, the druid became a high druid, wearing an all-white robe, and specializing as an instructor in arts, general teaching, counselors, arbitrators, judges, and many more. Apparently, positions above high druid were elected, on a special day each year called the Day of Renewal. The next level that a druid could attain was that of Chief Druid, ruling over a group of clans and wearing white robes with scarlet trim. Trim design was governed by the group of clans, and many different symbols were used, from trees to animals, to eventually, Celtic knotwork and designs. Above this level came the arch druids, who wore white robes with gold trim. This post governed geographical regions, with several chief druids under them. They general had their own retainers, and administered the great druid colleges, which they would locate in sacred woods or groves. There was a college dedicated to the poets, the bards, the historians, the healers, herb and spell law, seers therewith, astronomy and astrology. To reach the rank of druid, a novitiate had to graduate from each of these colleges, requiring the pupil to travel all through the country and meet and get to know all of the ranking druids of his day. This would in turn, aid him at his time of election. Above the rank of arch druid came the legendary rank of great druid, who wore a white robe with intricate trim of scarlet and gold, along with necklaces of gold and bracelets of gold to mark his exalted rank. The great druid ruled the entire cult, and presided over all of the great rituals on the major holidays. There is a special rank that existed, although the duties of the position has been lost in time, and that is of the hierophant, or priest king. One can well imagine what his position might entail. Beliefs the beliefs of the druids that have survived the moldering of time are wide and varied, but all are along the lines of nature. They believed in many other worlds, such as Magmo, the Great Plain, Magmel, the Pleasant Plain, Tirnel, the Other World, or Tirna. Humanoid resembling deities were also worshipped, such as Who the Mighty and his Queen. Many subcults existed within the druid beliefs, including a sect of weapons, as, hammer, axe, spear, bow, and later, the sword. They also worshipped the priestesses of Sainar. Druidesses that existed from Druidism's earliest development as a cult, until around 600 AD, and finally the Dryades, which was a druidess sect originating around 400 AD and ending around 600 AD. Their temples were simple affairs, usually a table stone, pile of stones, or sacred wood supported by stone, 
located in open spaces in forests, sacred groves, mounds, caves, lakes, rivers, or even the eldritch stone circles left behind by the mystical, stone followers, of the distant past. Druids also practiced a form of baptism for newborns, sprinkling the baby with river, lake or seawater to consecrate the birth. They practiced a rite of sacrificing their hair to their gods to mark their ministry. They had rites for magic, healing, and they even ritually grew primrose for the fairies. Druid Magic Magic was performed by using three key elements, spells, including incantation, gestation, and material usage, amulets, and power items. Posture was important as well, the proper stance being recorded as standing on one leg with one arm outstretched, and one eye closed. This appears to be a universal druidic stance. They had a range of spells, for weather control, healing, human and animal fertility shape-shifting, invisibility and hypnosis, animation of trees and rocks, morphing of trees and rocks into fully armed warriors, illusions and mass hallucination. Common amulets with a wheel or disc, a white marble ball, quartz pebbles and crystals, boar teeth, amber, phallus symbols, and of course, animal symbols. Animal amber figures were considered extremely powerful by the druids. They made potions as well, being world-renowned for poisons, aphrodisiacs, and the drink of oblivion, which would cause the imbiber to suffer complete memory loss. Power items used by the druids included wands. They were made from yew and willow, staves made of oak and ornamented with mistletoe, and an item called glain, or a magical snake egg. These eggs are believed to be petrified sea urchins that had been scavenged from early Bronze Age burial mounds. Geodes were considered to be powerful, as well as any natural crystal. Druids were seers, healers, bards, historians, magicians, priests, and what is less well known, powerful warriors as well. Though they did not wear armor, they carried shields made from white poplar, and even had a shield maker college. They were expert fighters with the staff, bows, and hook bill. This was some kind of sickle, usually of copper or bronze. They also used in battles the axes, spears, and later, swords. Their weapons were constructed out of stone, copper, or bronze. Iron was rarely used, as it became available to them relatively late in their history. Iron was also shunned, because it repelled the fairy folk, of whom they also worshipped. The Gods of the Druids Many are familiar with the gods in the Druid pantheon that are direct manifestations of nature, such as the oak tree and the ash, but few people know that they actually had a god and a goddess in their own image. Whether these beings were adopted from other races or not, is unknown. But there are some interesting parallels. The rituals to these gods and goddesses were recorded by various bards who witnessed the events. Specific accounts were left by the bard Aniron, who was a contemporary of Hengist and Taliesin, poets of sub-Roman Britain in the 6th century AD, during the decline of Druidism as a great power. He states, however, that it was a very ancient ritual in his day. Either way, the origins of the deities are unclear. The god was known as Hu Gadan, or simply, Hu the Mighty. He lived and walked the earth during the time of the Great Flood. It is believed to be the same one that Noah saved mankind from, also it seems, that Noah and Hu the Mighty are probably the same man. It is not clear from the stories just exactly how Hu saved the ancient druids from destruction, but it involved some great achievement he performed with his oxen, and according to legends, he did it so well so as to prevent the flood from ever occurring again. At any rate, he somehow collected together and carried the primitive race, and formed them into families and communities. He gave them the first traditional laws for the regulation and government of society. He was eminently distinguished for his regard for justice, equity, and peace. He conducted the several families of the first race to their respective settlements in the various regions, but he had also instructed this race in the art of husbandry prior to their removal and separation. The End of the Druids The Romans after they conquered Gaul, which is a place in our days in France, outlawed the Druids and they did the same after they had conquered England. The Druids were persecuted by the Romans but they continued to practice their beliefs. However, it was the arrival of Christianity which really led to the end of Druidism. 
In Ireland Christian saints such as Saint Patrick are believed to have fought with the Druids, according to the early Christian sources. The saint was allegedly able to defeat the magic of the Druids and this was a factor in the Christianization of Ireland. As countries such as England, Wales and Ireland became more Christian, the Druids are believed to have all but have disappeared. However, many believe that the bards in Ireland, Wales, and in other places, continue the tradition and even the beliefs of the Druids, into relatively modern times. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Curious Facts. And if you do, please like the video. And if you look forward for new videos on our channel please subscribe and click on the bell to be notified when new videos arrive.